What's going on everybody, it's Orock here and I'm back at you with another video and in this video we're going to talk about variables in JavaScript and this is the first video in my um, JavaScript uh, uh, tutorial series um, and we're going to talk about variables because they are the fundamental conceptual, um, they're one of the fundamental conceptual building blocks of computer programming and I want to explain this in a way in which you'll learn something whether or not you're new to computer programming or you have some experience with computer programming and this isn't your first rodeo. Now don't worry about the diagram in the background just yet. I'm going to explain all this. This might look a little strange if you're new but I'm going to explain all this um, in a way that you understand it. I just want to talk briefly about variables first. So what are variables to begin with? Variables are the names you give computer memory locations which are used to store values in a computer program. Um, they're containers for storing data and they store data values, right? So when you create a variable, it's called declaring variables in a JavaScript program and in you know pretty much every other programming language as well. And different programming languages have different ways of creating variables inside a program. And in JavaScript, there's four ways, and I'll show you that in a bit. I just want to give you some, you know, some theory, some conceptual overview first, and I'll show you those four ways in a bit. And when we use the term allocate, we, we indicate that we're creating memory for, we're creating um, an area uh, in a given memory for for a variable to store its variable to store its value. Sorry, and. Uh, a variable is deallocated when the system reclaims that memory back. You're not going to have to worry about this because JavaScript is what's called a dynamically typed language. So all of that memory management is done under the hood. Um, other, other languages where you do have to worry about this are like C and C++ where you have to allocate and deallocate memory. But um, that's just for, you know, your little background knowledge and programming if you didn't already um, know that. Um, but that JavaScript is dynamically typed um, and there are several data types in which we will learn about later where you can store um, in variables. Um, there's strings, there's numbers, there's booleans, there's undefined, there's null, among others. And um, so basically, um, let's go back to this diagram. Now, what does this all mean? Right. So I said computer programs have memory. Right. Um, and this is just like. Uh, a, a block of memory, right? It's this isn't really the sort of way. This is just like an arbitrary diagram, right? These little numbers here with the XOs two one, XO two two, those are what's called memory addresses. And I want to show you what's going on under the hood, so you kind of just know how computer programming um, variables are stored, and in JavaScript, more importantly, how variables are stored, right? So basically. Um, when you declare a variable, right, and this is how you declare one of the ways how you declare a variable is you use this let keyword right here um, and you give it a name and then you give it a value. This is what's called a string. This is just like a character, um, a bunch of characters and a quote. And this string is equals to Apple and Apple is being stored in X. Right. So what happens is when you say, hey, you use the keyword let and you give it some sort of name and we'll, and we'll talk about the naming conventions and how you do go about giving your variables names in a bit, but just stick with me. You give it a name and then you assign it. This is the assignment operator. The equal is the assignment operator. You assign it some value, right? What happens in the memory is the computer program is going to say, okay, Hey, you just declare this variable. Let me go reserve a space in memory. Um, at this particular address, and store this Apple value there, right? So X is pointing to like a memory address X zero two three, right? And that um, that memory address has that value Apple, right? So when you reference it later on in a computer program, and like let's say you want, uh, let me grab my pen here. Um, let's say you have like an uh, maybe you say. Um, my favorite fruit is you have a string my favorite. so what that's going to do is that's going to reference this x is just a placeholder for this memory address the value in that memory address which is apple so it's the computer program is going to go to this memory address 
retrieve the value from there and spit it out and put it in the computer program. So that X, like I said, is like a placeholder, which points to the uh, memory location holding that value. So that's kind of how variables are stored and how they work in JavaScript and in computer programming in general, right? Now, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit more and I'm going to take you over to like um, Visual Studio Code and then we're going to talk about how we're going to actually do some coding. We're going to talk about how, you know, you use certain keywords to declare variables, um, how you actually name your variables and other things that are like quirky in JavaScript when working with variables and other nuances as well. So stick with me in the next slide. Okay, so I'm back and I've got my terminal open here. My iTerm actually is a really good application. So um, if you want to use something cool for, you know, um, accessing the terminal, um, you know, use iTerm. Um, so I've got my iTerm open and I'm going to go into my JS course folder and I'll be using this JS course folder throughout this tutorial to basically make files that we can work through and I can show you examples and explain concepts in, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD into my desktop. Um, uh, whoops. CD into my desktop. And then I'm going to CD into this JS course folder, right? And I'm going to do touch and I'm going to say variables.js and I'll create the variables file. Um, and then I can do just like open period. I just open that folder and I can just right click it and open with Visual Studio Code. Okay, so I mentioned that there are four ways to declare a variable in JavaScript and, ver and JavaScript has what's called keywords. And there's about like 40 plus or so, I'm not really sure on the actual number of keywords, but there's a bunch of keywords in JavaScript and in other programming languages as well that are just reserved keywords, meaning I can't use those keywords to name values because they're reserved for certain purposes. And, you know, there's about three, there's four ways to declare a variable, um, but there's three keywords you can use to declare a variable, right? So the first one I'm going to teach you uh, was used from 1995 to 2015. So if you become a JavaScript developer or a software engineer, a developer in general, and you start to work on legacy code, you might see this, but going like read more recently written code, you might not see this at all, um, unless someone is just like not writing good code. Um, but as of like um, 2015 and beyond, when we started like um, writing ES6 code, we use different keywords. So the first keyword you're probably gonna see is this keyword var, right? So this is the keyword you have to sort of use one of the key in the past, not now, but like you had to use this keyword and declare a variable. So we're gonna go back to that example of Apple or Apple or, or var x is equals to apple to the text string apple right and to end this off you could use a semicolon i'm going to use a semicolon because i'm so used to semicolons in other languages like i i come from mainly a java background um so you have to use semicolons and it just looks nicer to me in my opinion you don't have to use semicolons in javascript so i can just do that and then save my program and it will be perfectly fine um, but I just use it because, you know, it looks nice to me. So, you know, you're free to do what you want, but, um, for this per the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use, um, semicolons, right? So we have this, um, var X, right? So it's equals to Apple. That's one of the ways you can declare a variable. Remember, this is the old way, right? And I'm going to do an inline comment, which is two forward slashes and just say, and this is not read by the computer, this is just to read, uh, for humans to read. So in your program, this is gonna just be completely ignored by the compiler. It's just for, you know, people to sort of read and know what's going on in your programs. But for this tutorial, it's to sort of drive home a concept. So here, I'm gonna say, old way, don't use. Right? This is the new way for declaring a variable and you use this keyword let, right? So we're going to say let, um, let's say fruit, let's be more descriptive fruit equals to pineapple, right? And those, that's a variable right there. And this is the better new way, ES6 way of declaring vars 
use this, right? And there's another way, and you use this way if you don't want your 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 um, variable to change. So this use const. It's like short for constant. So I'm gonna say birth date because your birth date doesn't change. The day that you're born is the day that you're born, and this is gonna be a string. I'm gonna say uh, January first. 1970 that's a birth date right there so um this is a way that you can declare variables you can also just like just straight up just write a letter or something and then use the assignment operator like k is equals to seven that's a valid way of declaring a variable right but you wouldn't initialize a variable like that you probably like you're writing something down like okay so if i wanted to change the x that i already created i could just say x is equals to, uh, I don't know, uh, what's another fruit, uh, mango, right? And that changes that apple to mango, that X, that memory location, right? The memory location is updated with mango instead of, in, instead of apple. So I'm just changing it from what it was initialized to, but don't ever do this if you're just declaring a variable for the first time. If you're changing a variable like later on in your program, that's when you can use this. But don't do this if you're declaring a variable for the first time. So we can just console log this console.log. And this is just like a way of printing something to your console X. And then we can just save that and then go into our terminal. And in that JS course folder, you have to have Node.js installed, by the way, to run this command. So you just say Node. Um, uh, what's the name of this file variables variables js and then you get that mango which is what that x value was consequently i could just say something like um print something else again print fruit fruit save that go back to this and then print that it will be mango and pineapple so we get those values right so um, what else do we want to know about variables in JavaScript? So uh, yeah, so let's talk about naming conventions, right? Because in your programs, you're probably not going to ever need to, um, you're probably not going to ever name a variable like one single letter. It's probably going to be something more descriptive for what your program actually does. You know, so like if you're creating like a video game, it could be like let score equals zero. Um, you know, something that is very descriptive, right? So all variables must be identified with unique names in JavaScript. And these unique names are called identifiers. And identifiers can be short names like X, like you just saw, or more descriptive like score or sum or total volume or lifetime or whatever. It really just depends on the program you're writing um, and what that variable actually stores. So it's just storing like a lifetime and give it like, you know, some sort of value for how long it, that variable is supposed to live or whatever your program is supposed to do, right? So the general rules for like creating variables and unique identifiers are one, um, so I'm just gonna uh, copy and paste here so I don't waste time typing. So one, names can contain letters, digits, underscores, and dollar signs, right? Um, but they must begin with like a, a letter, right? Um, they can begin with like a dollar sign or an underscore. And you'll see this in like older libraries, like underscore JS and, and jQuery, where they use variable jQuery. They use like, um, the dollar sign for like, you know, inbuilt jQuery variables and whatnot. Um, and then underscores a lot of their. Um, variables begin with like an underscore. That's why it's called like underscores, right? So, um, but we won't use that in this tutorial. And reserve keywords. Um, names are, uh, can't be reserved keywords. Can't use reserve keywords. And um, they're case sensitive. And case sensitivity means like your uppercase, lowercase. So like, let's just say fruit is different. So let me just say that. Let fruit 
let uh, fruit equals to um, pineapple is different from let fruit with a capital F equals to pineapple. So right there, this fruit and that fruit will be two separate memory locations, right? They're not equal, they're the same word, but one is you know uppercase, one is lowercase. These are technically two different values as far as JavaScript is concerned, right? So it's case sensitivity. And I also wanted to talk about this equal sign. This is not an equal sign. This is an equal sign as far as like math is concerned and whatnot and algebra and all that stuff. But this is what's called an assignment operator in computer programming, right? So basically, um, an assignment operator gives the value on the left. So this score, whatever we put on the right. So this value on the right zero is given to this value on the left score, which is, you know, uh, which the computer program saw this let and this score. Oh, this is a variable. Let me create a memory location for this. And then this assignment operator is telling it, Hey, at that memory location score, um, wherever it points to put this value there, this value zero there, right? So that's the assignment operator, right? There's also this concept of, um, equality, which we'll talk about later. Um, but that equality uses like either this or, or this three equal signs, two equal signs or three, but we'll talk about that later. You don't have to know too much about it now. Um, yeah. So we talked about that and also. Um, let's talk about how variables can hold numbers and also values as well, because variables in JavaScript, they can hold pretty much any data type. And unlike statically typed languages like Java, C++, um, and C sharp, uh, you can just use whatever data type without declaring the type first, right? You do have to do declare the type in TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial right now. Um, and also if you put a number in quotes, it's going to be treated as a string, you know? So if you say, let score equals to zero, that's actually, oh wait, score is already being used. You say score two. So you say score two is equal to zero. This is actually different from this. This is not the same data type. This is a number and this is a string because we have this enclosed in strings. Um, uh, uh, what do they call it? Yeah, we have this close in quotations. Um, so there's like different ways of actually declaring variables, right? Um, and assigning them. You don't have to assign them all in one line. You can do something like, hey, I want this um, beach name. I live right near the beach. So beach name is equals to Baja, right? Um, you can do that or you can say, let beach name two is, you know, you, you just declare that and then you take that on the next line or somewhere else in the program. Like this could be like the top of your program. You have some variables that you declare later and then you can say beach name two is equals to flamingo. Right. So let's talk about a few things here. Right. Add that semicolon and save. So what am I doing here with this uppercase in the second name and the lowercase here? This is called camel casing. Right. And I'm going to write that on top here. Um, camel case is a normal uh, convention for naming variables with more than one word. Okay. So if you have a variable with more than one word, you often going to use, you're almost always going to use camel casing, right? Um, to sort of declare that variable. This is like a normal and sort of, uh, agreed, agreed on practice in programming that you'll see used everywhere. So camel case, your um, variables, that's good practice. 
um, you can also have one statement and declare many variables. So you can say, let first name, let's say first name equals Jeff, right? And then you can also say what car name equals to uh, Chrysler. Hope I'm spelling that right. Chrysler. And then price equals to um, uh, 25. Uh, let me just say 25,000, 35,000. All right. So what am I doing here? So when you use the let keyword and these, you use a comma delimited um, spaces to like sort of have these variables all on one line. Let's include that. Um, this let keyword sort of is like used for all of these other uh, variables and you can have as many as you can and as you can fit on one line, right? Um, and basically it declares all those variables. So basically this is the same as saying like, um, this is the same as just like that, right? This is literally the same as this. So it's just a more concise way of declaring variables, right? Um, all right. So like I said, that's just a simpler way of, let me just back that up. It's just a simpler way of declaring a bunch of variables on the same line and being more concise. There's also this concept of declaring variables without values and those values will have a type of undefined, right? Um, so if you don't, so like, up here, if I didn't declare this, right? If I didn't give this a value, this beach name too would be undefined. So let me actually do that right now. So let me actually show you that this value here is undefined or the value inside that is, is undefined, right? So we're gonna save that and then we're gonna go back to my iTerm um, and then we're gonna do a node variable JS. And then we get undefined here because we're printing to the console this beach name, but it doesn't have anything in it. And by default, if you don't uh, initialize this value, it'll give it a value of undefined. So yeah, um, be uh, aware of that as well. Um, and also there's a concept of simple arithmetic in JavaScript, right? Let me just delete that. So you can just like declare uh, values and add them together, right? Or you can just like actually um, do arithmetic in line. So like let a is equals to 10 plus seven uh, plus uh, five. So that should equal 23, 22 if I'm not mistaken. So console.log a and then we go back to our terminal and oops, I didn't save this program, save it, go back. And then let me just clear this Let me clear this. Uh, actually didn't even need to do that. So yeah, 22. So that's the value here at a, we can also do something like this where instead of like, you know, um, a, we can just like say, uh, let's num one equals to two, uh, let's num three, or we can just, like I said, use this notation here, um, where we just use comma delineated num two equals to seven num three, three equals to six, right? And then we end up with a semicomma, I mean a semicolon. Uh, and then we can just do like num one plus, we can just do, let's throw that in a console log, console dot log num one plus num two plus num three. We save that. Um, so this right here should give us like 15. Um, and clear. And right, that gave us 15. 
So we can either like do everything like inline, like I showed you before, or just declare variables and then add those variables. And the memory, like what the, like I said, the computer program is going to go to this, where this um, num1 is pointing to in memory, get that value and insert it here. Um, so remember that diagram I showed you, what it's really doing is going to the memory location that num1 is pointing to, getting the value and inserting it here. Same thing for num2 and num3 is doing the same thing, going to that memory location, um, fetching the value and then putting it here, right? Um, so that's arithmetic. Um, you can also add names, right? So you can add like uh, uh, strings as well. So if I were to go up and give this like um, Flamingo again, right? Um, and then I would do like console log um, uh, beach name plus uh, beach name two, right? And what I want to do, this plus is um, can be two things. It can be used as a concatenator if you're adding two strings um, or like just other values, it can just concatenate it, which basically means it's putting them together. It's literally bunching them together. I'm gonna show you something real quick, right? Um, so if I go over, wait, let me save that, save, go over to my terminal and I do a node variable JS, you'll see Baja and Flamingo are jumbled together. Now, if I want, like, that's what concatenation does. It just squishes everything together, right? So if I want to have a space, I'm gonna have to actually come here and put a space in front of Flamingo or at the end of Baja, right? So if I save that, go back, run it again, there's that space. Or I can come down here, add a, add a space right here, and then add another plus sign, save that, go back over, um, let me just delete this. Go back over. Let me actually save this first. Sorry about that. Um, and then there's your space, right? So you can actually, if you want to concatenate values, um, but you want them to be spaced out, um, just be aware that you might have to add a space at the end, like here or at the beginning, like here, or where you're concatenating, just add an actual space. A lot of people do do this where they like let space equals to this um, and then do something like that. And then here they'll just say space, right? And then save it. And then I go back and then boom, same thing, right? So let's show you something. I'm going to show you something really quirky, right? And, you know, this is basically how a lot of computer programs work, including JavaScript when it comes to concatenation. This is very important because um, basically it'll like uh, make your programs act differently than what you expect it to do, right? So when you concatenate, what, what do you think is going to happen if I try to, um, like I said, let, let's say S equals to three plus uh, five uh, plus the value seven in quotes. Sorry, seven in quotes. What do you think that's gonna happen if I maybe just tried to concat, if I tried to console log this S? right and let me just put this above here so it just makes more sense what do you think is going to happen let's see let's go over let's save that saved and go back over to our terminal and see um so node variables.js and then we get 87 now why do we get 87 instead of um the value of eight plus uh, five, uh, five plus three plus seven which would be 15. Why do we get 87? Um, and the reason is if you put a number in quotes, the rest of the numbers are going to be treated as strings when they're concatenated and they'll be concatenated, right? So um, that's basically what happens. So even if you were to do something like uh, uh, something a little different, like um, let y is equals to 
um, eight plus three plus nine, right? So you would expect that would equal like 20, right? Because nine plus three, um, that's 12. And then 12 plus eight is 20. But you're gonna see something really different. So I'm gonna console log this Y. And then you're gonna see, save that tab back over, go back up, boom. You're gonna see that eight, three, nine. All those three um, values are just being jumbled together. They're being concatenated, right? Um, like I said, if you put a number in quotes, the rest of the numbers will be treated as strings. And this is all, so these values here are just, this is like a string, right? Okay, so one last thing I want to show you, because you remember I said that dollar signs and underscores, those are valid for um, naming variables. So you could do something like let dollar sign equals to like, um, hello world. Um, and that's perf perfectly valid, right? Or let value let me give you a space there. Let value equals to foo, right? That's perfectly valid as well. You'll see that even if we tried to console log that, right? Um, dollar sign value, we save that. We go over to our terminal and we do no, and we're gonna get foo, right? Um, so that does um, work and it does compile and everything. Um, because do, um, JavaScript treats like the dollar sign as a letter. Um, so basically anything that has a dollar sign in front of it, it's a variable uh, as a variable. It's a, it's a valid variable. Sorry. I don't know why it was hard, but it's a, it's a valid way of naming a variable. Right. Um, uh, and I'm going to show you one more thing cause this tutorial is getting a little long. Um, so we also have the underscore as well. So this could be a valid variable just having that underscore, right? That's a valid variable, or this is a valid variable as well, right? Um, and that's not really used too often. Like the dollar sign, right? That's not really used often. It was used in the library called jQuery, where the main function was a dollar sign uh, to select like HTML elements. So something like this in jQuery, we use dollar sign and then you use this and then you, uh, I don't know, use BR. You're selecting all the break tags. That's what that means. You select all the break tags um, or P you select all the P tags and so on and so forth. Or div, you select all the div tags. So, you know, that's jQuery, a little bit of jQuery, um, but that's not really used as often. Um, but professional programmers, a lot of people use the dollar sign as an alias for like the main function in like a JavaScript library. So you'll see that in a lot of older JavaScript libraries. You also see that in underscores with the underscores as well. A lot of like professional programmers use it as a way of like um, uh, having an alias for private hidden variables. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically it for like underscores and dollar signs. And yeah, it's basically we're hitting a 35 minute mark here. So that's basically it for variables. I really wanted to make this very comprehensive just so that you understand the intuition for what the computer program is doing under the hood, as well as how like, you know, JavaScript works with variables, how they're named, um, the conventions, what happens when you concatenate and, you know, there's little tips and tricks for declaring variables like inline, uh, multiple variable declarations and other things as well. Um, I wanted to make this very comprehensive so that like you can understand it as it applies to JavaScript as well as computer programming in general. Um, because as a computer programmer, you're going to know, or you're going to probably learn more than one language in your lifetime. And I know a lot of you are beginners here. Um, so I wanted to really just give you that good foundation for learning, um, other languages in the future. Um, but yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you like, uh, if you like this video, Go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, and yeah, um, thanks for watching. <laughs>